I'm sorry to take off this bed of the Ranger. And what I've done is taken my engine crane and then hooked up just this toe strap to all four corners because this nice Ranger had uh, four tie down spots, which makes it very useful. And all I had to do was take out the bed bolts and this whole thing will lift right up. However, now I'm maxed out and it doesn't quite clear the bumper. So I'm gonna need to do a little manually lifting and try to do a little slide in so I don't scrape too much of, uh, of the side panels. But just figured I'd do a little update of the process just in case you at home are gonna be attempting something like this. You sort of know what you have coming. As you're lifting off your Ranger bed, there's only two things besides the bed bolt you need to worry about. One is the wire connectors for your taillights. That's a pretty one to, pretty easy one to undo. Then you have your gas tank filler neck. I don't know how, but I totally forgot about this. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you can either disconnect from the bedside or undo the metal neck from the rubber one. I'm gonna undo the filler neck from the bed panel because when you undo, there's only one, there's only three bolts. And then when you undo the filler neck, the cap comes with it, you put the cap back on, that way nothing gets into your fuel system. Whereas if you took the metal slide out of the rubber part of your filler, uh, you'll have a big hole that you'll need to stuff with paper towels and whatever, but through that process you might push some debris in there that you do not want in your fuel tank. I've now pulled the filler neck down in, put the cap on, and put the mounting screws back in. That way I don't lose them. This is now what the Ranger bed looks like. I have cut out this middle piece I just see on the ground. By cutting down the seam, if you choose to, there is a, there is a flange that's kind of bent over that uh, merges the two, being the bed sides and the bed deck um, together via spot welds. You can drill those out just like I drilled out the spot welds in the back here. Uh, however, I didn't want to do that. I'd just rather cut them. And I cut the front. I got to fix up that middle section because there is kind of put onto a middle cross member. Um, so I got to cut that back and make that look nice so I can still use it. But back here I did drill out um, the spot welds. There was quite a few. You just kind of have to feel them and brush off the paint. Maybe clean the paint a little bit and you'll find them. Um, that was pretty easy. Then all I did was bend over the lip. And that's when I cut it and then I just beat it down below. If I were to do it again, I would have taken these off from both sides because these are kind of holding them up. And when you push them, or just having the weight would, uh, of it being released, would push them down. And nothing major happened. Uh, however, theoretically, in a serious case, you could bend the bottom of the, of the bed sides, which you probably don't want to do, but it didn't end up being anything anything crazy but if I were to do it again I probably would have popped those off just so that wasn't a factor at all and that would drop right through this side I kind of cut some of this one but this side you can really see what I'm talking about with this flange um, it kind of there was spots basically where the cross member is that they kind of disappear but uh, for the most part the flange is there um, that's where you'll find all these spot welds you can kind of see the lighter the lighter circles all the way through, those you have to drill out, and then that middle piece should pop out of there. Not what I ended up choosing to do, but you could definitely go that way. Back to the Ranger bed, we have the insert all tacked up, ready to flip over so we can work the cross members. Now, it's important to do the cross members of four. This is fully welded in because you don't want your front line to be all wobbly, and you don't want your rear line to be all messed up, kind of in the same same orientation. Um, so I have it tacked in there enough to when I flip it over, it's not gonna fall out. But that way I can do the cross members, and the cross members are gonna stiffen it up, keep it keep it straight, and then I can flip it back over, finish welding the whole seams um, and the front, and then I gotta because of the way beds are, there's a little. There's a basically a roll, but um, I'm going to try to probably heat this seam up about roughly where it needs to go and then beat it down with a mallet. And then then I can weld the bottom seam. And then uh, you just need to put our holes in uh, for our bed bolts. And then, it, but when you're welding this, it's important to only do little sections at a time. 
because you don't want to warp it. You can warp the whole sheet and it's going to look super funky. Now it is getting a bedliner paint, so it should cover up a lot of the uh, imperfections that um, any warping might have to do. But uh, less warping is more better. And you just got to go slow and make sure you're kind of evenly um, making heat around. So you do a couple over here, maybe do a far corner, then come up here, maybe do like an X. So you're always trying to um, heat away from from one general location that's going to help you with your warping now that's going to be all for today this is kind of the intro to the welding portion um, i'm out of time for the weekend really is what's stopping me and uh, i will get back to this next weekend maybe friday saturday and we'll do we'll flip it over we'll do all the cross members and then we can finish doing the uh, bed itself and we'll move on to paint and paint prep Thanks for watching. Let me know if you liked it down below and let me know if you have any tips or tricks or questions that I might be able to answer in the comment section. But anyways, till next weekend. Thanks for watching.